It is cold outside. Two degrees, wind chill of 14 below. And the streets are empty. They're either under this dome or at home or someplace watching this game. It's the Eagles and the Vikings. And as always here in the postseason, we are thrilled to have not one, but two sideline reporters, not just Chris Myers, but our own Pam Oliver. Pam. Well, Joe, coming back from the dead has given the Eagles new life. So says Brian Westbrook, who told me that Philly will try to challenge the Vikings in a number of different ways. Look for Westbrook to line up outside at wide receiver at times. He also says the Eagles will try to run more screen plays than they have been. Also, he says the main thing, though, is we have got to run the ball and challenge that defense. One other note, Greg Lewis injured in pregame warm-ups. Boy, I saw him jogging out onto the field. Now for more on the Vikings, let's go over to Chris Myers. Having pregame warm-ups, Tavares Jackson ran over to personally thank Donovan McNabb for a text message. McNabb sent Jackson when he was benched back in week two. Tavares said it helped him become a better leader. It encouraged him, and he was told when that big chance comes, be ready. He's ready for that chance now and said he wasn't nervous, not yet. Adrian Peterson, more annoyed that people are talking about his fumbles than his leading the league in rushing, held the ball tightly in practice all week and closer to his body. In fact, he carried the ball to and from meetings and to and from the building to get a better grip. Always with a good grip, Troy Aikman and Joe Buck. All right, Chris, thank you very much. And the Vikings won the toss. They deferred. The Eagles will start this game with the football. And it will be an early look at Donovan McNabb. The run game of the Eagles against this outstanding run defense of the Vikings. Glad you're with us. Here we go. Quentin Demps. The rookie on the return. Not much. Dragged down around the 11. A 13-yard return. And Eric Frampton downfield to make the play. So Philadelphia's offense will trot onto the field. The ninth-ranked offense in the NFL. Sixth best passing attack. 22nd best rushing attack. And since the benching, which happened on the 23rd of November at Baltimore. Donovan McNabb and this offense with that hiccup in Washington, they have really played well. And we heard Pam's report on the text message that Donovan sent to Tavares Jackson after the benching and visiting with Donovan McNabb. He said, who would have guessed I'd be going through the same thing just a couple of months later. Starting in the shotgun, and the pass is out of the reach of Deshaun Jackson. Jackson was open, and Donovan McNabb threw way too high, incomplete second and ten. Brian Robinson making the start because Ray Edwards, the normal starter, is down with an injury. He just comes untouched off the edge. You know, a lot of the quicker drops that the Eagles are going to employ. They're going to allow them to be blocked one on one on the outside, but that time Robinson had nobody blocking him. And off is to Westbrook, and he loses yardage. Ben Lieber made the play. We look at this defense. And up front, no Pat Williams, no Ray Edwards, as Troy mentioned. The linebackers and one of the better young linebackers in the game, Chad Greenway. Chad Greenway and Ben Lieber both very active at the linebacking position. Both good cover guys, both good at blitzes. Third down and 12. with time with the completion to Kevin Curtis and Curtis makes moves takes it out to the 24 yard line a 15 yard catch and then brief run on third down and 12. Really good job by Kevin Curtis finding the hole in the zone you're going to see he just releases vertical it's a curl but then he keeps moving to get into the window he's able to get around Chad Greenway who was in coverage in that zone area and Donovan McNabb with time to throw the football is able to find him. Handoff is to Westbrook. 
Greenway on the stop a gain of two. You know it's going to be important for Philadelphia throughout this game to continue to try to run the football and hope that something breaks but they can't give up on it too early and as we all know Andy Reid and offensive coordinator Marty Morningwig are inclined to do that. And trying to run the football against this Minnesota defense is a challenge and it has been for every team that they face the number one run defense in the NFL for the third consecutive year. Greg Lewis with a sprained ankle. He is in the game. It's second and eight. McNabb down the middle for Greg Lewis, incomplete. And good coverage downfield. Darren Sharper was back there with the other safety, Medea Williams. Third down and eight. You know, a lot of the questions coming into this ball game if you're Philadelphia is how are you going to block up front. How are you going to handle a guy like Jared Allen and Kevin Williams. Well last week the Eagles faced the Dallas Cowboys and the NFL's leader in sacks and Demarcus Ware and did a pretty good job against him. They're treating Jared Allen just as they did last week with Demarcus Ware. is to the sideline and caught by Brent Selleck depends on the spot Selleck making another start in place of the injured LJ Smith out with a bad shoulder and we'll see where they place the football and if it's enough for a first down yeah that's going to be close it looked like where they were spotting it it might be a little bit short and then you wonder well Brent Selleck's got to know how far he's got to get in order to pick up the first down if he pushes that another step another yard then it's an easy first down. It's fourth down and it's the punt team onto the field for Andy Reid. When you think back to the success that Philadelphia has had in the four wins that they've had of the last five games it's been because they've done a great job converting on third down. Sav Rocco will punt it. Bernard Berrien, the high price receiver returner who was brought here from the Bears during this past offseason, is waiting deep. Good punt. Real good punt from back inside the 10. to the 10 is Bernard Berry and a 58 yard punt by Sav Rocca and the Minnesota offense will be on the field when we come back. Check this out. With this controller, the character will mimic your exact motions. See? Sweet. Now throw me a pitch just like we're outside. <laughs> Want to get away? Now you can. With Southwest Airlines Internet Specials, you can fly to destinations nationwide for just $49 to $99. Purchased by January 19th. Low fares, no hidden fees. You put your foot down and it just goes. It's kind of saying. Rrr. That Hemi did it. I love it. It's awesome. Yeah. That Hemi hits hard. Bam. Boom. Truck just kicked into gear. <laughs> I completely forgot I was pulling a trailer. It was a smooth ride. Fantastic. Go, 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 go. That's how we roll. Hey, it's me. This is awkward. It's not working. I just need to be alone. I'm no good for anyone right now. Yellow Book will always help you find what you're really looking for. See what she finds at yellowbook.com slash TV. Yellow Book. Last year, these guys starred in the NFL Super Bowl commercial. Help us pick this year's winner at nfl.com slash superad. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees.
Minnesota Vikings with their first possession of the day. And Tavares Jackson at quarterback, benched after the first two games. And just got it away. This one is incomplete. Ton of pressure by Stuart Bradley, and number 55 comes away. John a little bit as he almost got there in time. Well, Stuart Bradley, the middle linebacker, yeah, and that's more of a run blitz than it is a pass blitz. I mean, they're coming up the middle thinking that, well, they're probably going to hand the ball off to Adrian Peterson, and he's able to beat his man and get a hit on Tavares Jackson. And this is not new to the Minnesota Vikings. Last week against the Giants, they saw a number of blitzes. Toss to Adrian Peterson running left. And he loses a yard. Chris Gokong there to make the stop. When you look at this offense, you've got this big offensive line anchored by Matt Burke in the middle. You've got Tavares Jackson at quarterback who took over for the injured Gus Farad, who was 8 and 3 as a starter. And the big key to the success for Minnesota is the league's top rusher, Adrian Peterson, who led the NFL. With 1,760 rushing yards. Third down and 11. Delayed handoff to Chester Taylor. And it depends on the spot. Chris Clemens made the tackle. And it's a first down for Minnesota. Take a look at this defense. They have a lot of rotation with their defensive line, fresh bodies all the time. And there was a big change at linebacker when Omar Gaither was sent to the bench and Akeem Jordan took over at weak side linebacker. Yeah, and then that defensive front, which you look at them, you say, wow, this is really an undersized group, but yet they've done a great job stopping the run all season long. Handoff is to Peterson, and Peterson was met by Trent Cole. But Trent Cole wasn't alone. You know, we talk so much about Jim Johnson. We talked about him all last week in that game against Dallas when Jim Johnson's defense just overwhelmed the Dallas offense. And then a lot's been made of Jim Johnson's quote that he has never felt better about his defense going into a postseason game <laughs> and the way he yeah. feels about this group right now. And how would you feel good about that if you were Tavares Jackson or this offense when you hear Jim Johnson make that statement. Second and 11 out of the backfield it's Chester Taylor and Taylor is brought down by Jordan after a gain of eight. I thought it was a good job there on that first third down for Minnesota. And Daryl Bevel, the offensive coordinator, not wanting to force anything third and long. Why put Tavares Jackson in a compromising position? Instead, they play conservative, really just trying to pick up some extra yardage for the punt team, and they end up getting the first down with Peterson. Third down and three. Daryl Bevel, who played quarterback for Brad Childress, collegiately. Chester Taylor makes it to the 30 and again it depends on the spot. Stuart Bradley and Trent Cole in there on the stop. And it looks like they've marked Chester Taylor short of the 30 yard line and the punt team will come on for the Vikings. But I think that's a pretty good series though overall for Minnesota. I know Brad Childress in talking with him he kept stressing as he had throughout the week to Tavares Jackson it's OK to punt and you could tell very conservative there in the play calling and that's OK you never know how a young quarterbacks going to come in in these type of conditions and circumstances and what's at stake in a playoff game and let the game come to him and that's what they've done but they they were able to move the football at least a little bit so they're able to regain field position after this punt. However, covering punts has been a problem for Brad Childress's team. They've allowed four punt return touchdowns this season, which is tied for the most all time. 59 Giants and the 92 Falcons. Cluey punts it. Deshaun Jackson is waiting for it. Booming kick. From just outside the 10. 
Jackson has room to run. The punter, Cluey, is in his way. Jackson gets around Cluey and is down inside the 30 as the punt coverage team struggles yet again. 62 yard return by Deshaun Jackson just six yards shy of his season high and the rookie puts the ball inside the Minnesota 30 yeah, and so much for field position you see I mean it looked like Minnesota had a chance there to make a play on him and bottle him up but they just weren't able to do it he's able to bounce back out to his right and because of his speed I mean, Deshaun Jackson is one of these one of these guys with tremendous athletic ability he's got tremendous speed and he's able to outrun everybody up the right sideline. Both Buckhalter and Westbrook in the backfield with McNabb. And the handoff is to Westbrook who pushes the pile of the 25 picked up two. You know so many times you get into a game like this and you know when you start really analyzing exactly what's going to happen or what's not going to happen you focus on the offensive side of the ball or you focus on the defense and a lot of times in these tight games playoff type games then the special teams ultimately is what kind of tilts the, the balance in one favor or the other. We saw that definitely on display last night with ciphers of the San Diego Chargers and what he did against Indianapolis. Second and eight. Play action from McNabb. Allen doesn't get to him until now, and McNabb gets back to the line of scrimmage. Jared Allen, who was the big acquisition, the trade in April, was given a huge deal then after being traded here, and he rewarded the Vikings with 14 and a half sacks. And he's just not able to quite get there, but he does put the pressure on McNabb, and then there's some help from others that, along the way. And, you know, Jared Allen has brought some real toughness. Clearly, he's brought a ton of emotion to this defense. What a pickup he was. McNabb lost half a yard on that scramble in the end, so it's a sack for Allen, and it's third down and nine. A blitz, McNabb's in trouble. Penalty flag is down and the pass is dropped by Avant. It's a hold against Philadelphia. Holding offense number 67. This penalty has been declined. Result of the play, fourth down. So the Vikings decline the penalty. And we'll have roughly a 44 yard field goal try coming from David Akers that call against Jamal Jackson Philadelphia center. I'll tell you a lot of pressure off the edge as we saw in those last two plays but you know the real problem or the real concern for Philadelphia would be the pressure that they're then getting up inside and not really giving Donovan anywhere to step up. Officially a 43 yard try for David Akers and Akers drills it those three points set up by the punt return by Deshaun Jackson Minnesota defense a nice job to hold Philly right there three nothing Eagles on top oh, man that's good it's drinkability Let me explain according to my poll 41% thought drinkability meant the ability to drink. 26% said, easy to swallow. One guy in Boston told me to get out of his yard. Actually, drinkability means that Bud Light is just the right taste. This is one of your nicer maps. Not too heavy, not too light. Bud Light, the difference is drinkability. I do, I exercise daily, um, I do. Beep, Slate Sanchez's phone here reporting from the demolition site. Slate and the rest of the Action News team don't have AT&T, which means no bars out here on the outskirts of town. So we didn't get that call about the new blast zone, which is now here instead of way over there. I'm Slate Sanchez, and I'm about to be the news. Switch to the network with the best coverage, AT&T. More bars in more places. Now get 50% off all LG phones. It's got like toolboxes. Ah! That's a Ram box. That's pretty freaking cool. 
you know, you need that space. Put some fishing poles in there, shovels and hammers and That's stuff. I can't believe they let us do that. Colt McCoy and Texas Battle Ohio State. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Tomorrow, only on Fox. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Bud Light. The difference is drinkability. I'm sure there are a lot of Vikings fans wondering Brad Childress maybe should have accepted that holding penalty on third down and pushed the Eagles to the outer edge of field goal range and taken another shot at it on third down as it was he declined it. Akers hit from 43 and now Maurice Hicks who had a good day returning kicks last week against the Giants gets it out to the 22. Hard to believe that with the temperatures outside anybody at any part of the Twin Cities needs a fan on this Sunday, but they do on the Eagles bench. Three nothing, Philly. You put your foot down and it just goes. It's kind of saying. Rrr. That Hemi did it. I love it. It's awesome. Yeah. That Hemi hits hard. Man. Boom. Truck just kicked into gear. I completely forgot I was pulling a trailer. It was a smooth ride. Fantastic. Go, 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 go. That's how we roll. The fundamentals of the three economy are strong, my friends. What are you talking about? Three sandwiches from Wendy's for under a buck each. We get quality, value, and choice. The fundamentals of a three economy. Any more fundamentals in that bag? Shh. Did you hear something? That was me. Can I have another? There it was again. Introducing Wendy's Three Economics, featuring the fresh, never frozen double stack cheeseburger, one of three way better 99 cent sandwiches at Wendy's. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Frequent heartburn used to ruin my evenings, so I tried Prilosec OTC. It works all day and all night, so now heartburn won't keep coming back. Try Prilosec OTC, the round the clock heartburn blocker. I can see things. You had a twin brother, but he died when you were both in the womb. This Friday, for him to be born... He's trying to use you to enter our world. She must die. <laughs> the Unborn. Rated PG-13. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Wendy's Three Economics. Three way better sandwiches for 99 cents each at participating Wendy's. By the all-new Dodge Ram, never back down from a challenge. And by Universal Pictures, The Unborn, in theaters Friday. Second possession for Minnesota. First time they had it. Went 19 yards, picked up one first down. Peterson carried it twice. Each carry was for... Minus one yard, starting at their own 22. And the handoff is to Adrian Peterson. And so far, he's not had much room to run. Picks up three. They're going to whistle the ball dead. Peterson was down. And we look back on the Viking season review. The big money players brought in Jared Allen and Bernard Berrien. Tavares Jackson is benched after an 0-2 start. Then Gus Farad went to work. Part of his 8-3 winning record was that victory over Chicago. Won five of their last six, and Adrian Peterson won the rushing title. And Adrian Peterson is now down on the field. The ball popped out. They ruled him down, and that there was no fumble. But they're checking on Adrian Peterson, who is the franchise here in Minnesota. We'll be asking for your opinion today about two hamburgers that you will taste. We would like you to take several bites of each hamburger, enough to form an opinion. We asked these people who've never eaten a burger which they preferred, Whopper or Big Mac. Congratulations, McDonald's. You've won second. For a little. Nissan Versa, 34 MPG, 
and the largest passenger interior volume in its class for under $10,000. It's gonna be a late one, people. I won't be able to watch me on direct TV tonight. Relax, I'm setting my own DVR right from here. You know, you're a little scary up close. Direct TV lets you easily set your home DVR from any cell phone or computer. All right, express options. Well, when you ship with UPS, you're in control of the speed and the cost of your shipping. Need it in Miami in two days? Easy. How about next day by 8 a.m.? Guaranteed. You can even have it arrive the same day. It's whatever speed you need. It's not just express options. It's express options with UPS. I think I need a comb. Checking the head and neck of Adrian Peterson on the bench are the Vikings. Got that hit up high from Brian Dawkins. Almost fumbled. Looked like his knee was down right when the ball popped out. And so it's second down and eight. And the handoff is to Chester Taylor. Nice move and Taylor is out to the 29 yard line picked up five and we go back to that hit on Adrian Peterson by Brian Dawkins who almost forced another fumble he forced two last week in the Dallas game it went for touchdowns and Brad Childress wants to make sure that Adrian Peterson is OK made him go sit down and have the doctor check on him. It's third and three. Jackson fires and wide open is Bernard Berrien. Out to the 38 and another Minnesota first down. Well this offensive line for Minnesota does a good job of picking up the linebacker blitzes and you know if Tavares Jackson is just able to drop back and complete some of these shorter throws you know that's going to help him start to build some confidence and some trust in what it is that he's seeing. You know, they'd like to stay out of the third and longs and so that Jim Johnson can't give the exotic looks that he's so known for. Another throw from Jackson who wings it and it's nearly picked off by Quentin Michael who stepped in front of his auntie Shanko. Quentin Michael who's really had an excellent season and he's just sitting on this route. You can see the drive that he gets right there. He's reading Tavares Jackson. He's also reading Vasante Shanko and how he's releasing up the field. I tell you, if the, whenever you're playing in a game like this, particularly early, and you see a defensive back who's jumping routes, you want to come back to that guy as soon as possible and see if you can't put a double move on him. Handoff is to Chester Taylor, who gets walloped. Brian Dawkins laid another good hit. Bradley in on the stop. And a gain of seven. Brian Dawkins coming off a, a great game last week in that win against the Dallas Cowboys. We saw him knock out Adrian Peterson, and when he comes in, I mean, he delivers a blow. Not an overly big guy, but someone who definitely does not shy away from contact. It's third down and three. Just got it away. Jackson throws and completes. Bobby Wade. 11 yards and a Viking first down. Let's go down to the field and Chris Myers. Joe, Adrian Peterson is coming back in. The trainer looked in his eyes and they checked him for a concussion. He had a smack to the head and said his neck was twisted, but he was complaining about a sore back. When the trainer came over and even Brad Childress, he said, I'm okay to go. He's back in. He's been dealing with sprained left ankle since the Arizona game in the middle of December. Here is Adrian Peterson. Picks up two. Second down and eight coming. The FedEx Bowl Bash continues tomorrow on Fox with the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl and concludes on Thursday with the FedEx BCS National Championship game between Florida and Oklahoma. The FedEx Bowl Bash continues tomorrow only on Fox.
Jackson setting up a screen and he overthrows Peterson. Go back to when we were showing the, the year in review here for the Minnesota Vikings and the benching of Tavares Jackson after the second game. And you know, in talking with him just the other day, he acknowledged that he just put a lot of pressure on himself coming into this season. And you know, all of the people that talked about what kind of year the Minnesota Vikings were going to have coming in. They said well this is a team that's capable of making it all the way to the Super Bowl and it's all dependent on how well Tavares Jackson plays and and knowing that that was being said he said he added a lot of pressure on his on himself and that led to some of the struggles that he had during those first two weeks play clock is down to one Jackson throws out of the reach of Sidney Rice. And now it's fourth down and the punt team will come on for the Vikings. I tell you I saw him before the game though Joe and, and he was about as loose as as you can imagine you know a quarterback who's making his first playoff start and you always wonder I think as a coach as to how a guy like him and only his second season is going to react but I tell you he was he was out there moving around and seemed to seem to be about as calm as you could be for a big ball game. It. And we'll see where they mark it. They're going to mark it at the 16 yard line. That's where the Eagles will start with it. Just a 26 yard punt. Philly has the football and a three point lead. What if you could give your family just what they want this holiday for one low price? Introducing Sprint Family Plans. You'll get unlimited nationwide text, video, picture messaging, and more. And save at least $240 a year over comparable AT&T and Verizon plans. What better way to bring the family together? America's largest, most dependable 3G network. Come to a Sprint store and find out how much you can save. Why do we show up five hours before kickoff? Order every game. Dress like our dads. And sit in 10 degree weather on our anniversary. Why? Because this game is ours. Visa. For game day, it's the way to go. Hey, Coach Mora! We're gonna throw a playoffs party in my backyard. Big screen TV, lots of cold, refreshing Coors Light. You kidding me? No! We're even gonna play touch football with the neighbors. <laughs> I don't care who you play. Coach, there's gonna be girls at our party. You think we should talk to them about the playoffs? Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about it. Playoffs? Playoffs? Frost Brewed Coors Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL playoffs. Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? Okay, okay. Don't talk Forget about it. I brought it playoffs? up. No preservatives, no fillers, no no-nos. The only thing in our beef is beef. Sink your teeth into that. That's what we're made of. During the break, the officials got together. Tony Carrente, they he's the referee. They mark it now at the 25-yard line. That was just a net of 17 yards on the punt. A nine yard change and so Philadelphia starts at their own 25 McNabb throws to basket and basket is good for seven yards. Here's the Philadelphia season review Deshaun Jackson with 203 all purpose yardage in his debut against St. Louis has had a great year McNabb benched at the half week 12 against Baltimore and then resurrected McNabb a four and one finish for the Eagles. And it ended with that mauling of the Dallas Cowboys to secure a playoff berth and stamp their ticket for Minneapolis. Pretty remarkable that they've been able to put themselves in the position they're in here playing in the wild card game today. Handoff is to Buckhalter. Nice move. And Corral Buckhalter, who had a big game against the Cowboys, is forced out by Lieber after a 26-yard run. Tell you, Corral Buckhalter is 
you know, really one of the unsung guys on this team. He's been extremely productive when he's been given his opportunities. He hasn't had a lot of them, but as you said, played great last week in that win over Dallas. Does a nice job of setting up Kevin Curtis on the block. Starts to the inside, and as soon as he jumps to the inside, then Buckhalter is able to bounce it back to the outside. Handoff is to Buckhalter, and this time picks up a yard. Last two plays, Tori, they've lined Westbrook up wide to the outside. That last one, he was in motion. It's almost like they're diverting attention. All eyes go to Westbrook, and they're willing then to hand it off to Correll Buckhalter. Yeah, I think a couple of things. One, Westbrook, regardless of where he lines up, is, is clearly a real threat. And then Buckhalter, because he has run the ball so effectively, put both those guys in the game, make them honor Westbrook as a wide receiver, but then give the ball to Buckhalter because of the success that he's had. Starts this one in the slot. On second and nine, McNabb throws and completes Reggie Brown. Good for eight. Still short of a first down. So much has been made of the play selection, the play calling, and trying to keep defenses honest by sticking with the run. Pretty balanced here in the first quarter for the Eagles. Yeah, they're balanced with what they're doing. You know, as far as whether or not they're going to be able to have much success running the football in all likelihood at the end of the day they won't but I think that they've got to continue to try to run the football and that takes a lot of the pressure then off Donovan McNabb on third down and one timeout is called by the Vikings with six seconds left in the opening quarter here at the Metrodome. Ben Lieber, who's wearing the communication helmet and directing this defense, could not hear the call from the sideline. And so with that confusion, the Vikings on third and one called timeout. And Lieber was not getting the call from Leslie Frazier, who is on the list for a couple of different teams, it would seem, to interview for a head coaching position here in the next couple of weeks, third and one. A blitz out of the backfield. It was Westbrook off his hand incomplete. And now the field goal team will come on for the Eagles. This will be a 50 51 yard try by David Akers, who hit from 43 his first time. Well, that's got to be disappointing there for Philadelphia to get into a third and short. And then not be able to convert. You know, pretty good indication there as to you know how confident or the lack thereof of being able to pick that up with their running game and trying to swing one out to Westbrook. 51 yard try. Good snap, good hold, and the kick by Akers. Perfect. David Akers, two for two in this game. Good from 43, good from 51. Two field goals for the Eagles. 6 nothing Philadelphia after one Philadelphia Eagles have been held to two field goals pretty good field position by that good Minnesota defense and so a 6 nothing game and David Akers who's coming off a record setting year drills it for Philadelphia with Maurice Hicks on the return. Hicks gets it across the 20 to the 22 and that's where Tavares Jackson and the Vikings will start with it. I'm Joe that's Troy and I would say it hasn't been overwhelmingly great but so far pretty good for Tavares Jackson in this offense for Minnesota. Yeah I think it's a lot of probably what we expected or what Brad Childers expected and I think you come into a game like this and they've been somewhat protective of him over the last three weeks but particularly in a game like this you know just kind of let him settle in. I would think now as they they move through this second quarter and certainly into the second half that they'll open things up a little bit more for him but a good job by that Minnesota defense holding it to two field goals. Three of five on third down, and Adrian Peterson, who hasn't done anything yet, no gain, but they're going to get five free yards against this Eagle defense. Philly was offside. 
Offside, defense, number 93. Five-yard penalty remains first down. And it's the rookie second-round pick out of Notre Dame, Trevor Laws. Yeah, that's a real key for Tavares Jackson, knowing that you know, when you come in, we talk about what Jim Johnson likes to do and the pressures and the run blitzes, and we try to time up the snap count. And to be able to get in there and then mix it up, that's something that you can do playing at home. First down and five. Jackson in trouble, just throws it away in the direction of Klein Saucer. Jaquay Parker with pressure in the face of Tavares Jackson. You know, getting ready for this ball game, Joe, and looking back at what the Giants did, it was really pretty amazing how many blitzes they ran. In fact, Brad Childress talked about it, you know, right from the first snap. And and there is some carryover in knowing Steve Spagnuolo, the defensive coordinator there for the New York Giants, and having worked under Jim Johnson. But Jim Johnson is really, really good at always having one or two new wrinkles that this team hasn't seen before on film. Here is Chester Taylor, and he loses a yard and a half. Quentin Michael, the outstanding young safety, is taken over as the starter, and he's had a Pro Bowl type year. He was the one to get in there and make that play. Yeah, in fact, Quentin Michael, he's the guy who sets the really sets the table for everybody back there in the defensive secondary and makes all the calls. And Jim Johnson said that you know he's been a great leader for this defense, and it's allowed Brian Dawkins really to do what he does best, and that's just fly around, go after the ball, and make plays. It was first and five. Now it's third down and six. Jackson steps up and throws, completes to Rice. And another conversion on third down for the Vikings. Now four for six on third down is Minnesota. And, and this is why I don't think you can ever underestimate the importance of quarterback play in a playoff game. He's got Chris Clemens coming off the edge, and Tavares Jackson's able to step up inside of that rush and deliver a perfect throw. You see how he lays it over the hand there of Sheldon Brown. Nice job. There's Chris Clemens, and there's the pocket awareness of Tavares Jackson. Jackson slings it. The pass is caught by Schenko. This is a Minnesota offense, Troy, that averaged 26 basically 26 and a half points per game their last 11 games which was the fifth highest total in the NFL Tavares Jackson a quarterback rating of 115.4 in December that was the third highest in the NFL it's all kind of come together here offensively for Minnesota well you can't argue with the way that he has played and I think he's played a lot better than what he has gotten credit for he's going to air it out downfield for Berrien and this one incomplete. Dawkins was the closest one to it and now it's third and three. You know, I thought it was interesting in talking with Jim Johnson about you know what the keys to this ball game where you're going to see Bernard Barry in and that's what the Vikings like to do once they get things going and then take the shot nobody's caught more big balls this year than what Bernard Barry has has but you know surprisingly you know, you'd think getting ready to stop this offense you'd say well we got to shut down Adrian Peterson instead Jim Johnson said Really, the key for us is getting to Tavares Jackson. And then if we can do that, then secondly, we'll worry about Adrian Peterson. Jackson throws, and the pass is broken up by Sheldon Brown. And a penalty flag comes in. Andre Allison, the intended receiver, and a late flag was thrown for the coverage by Sheldon Brown. Pass interference, defense number 24. First down. So now Minnesota gets conversion on third down because of penalty, and this one's on Sheldon Brown. Now Sheldon Brown, he's sitting on the route, and you can see he gets him to look like with his left arm and then turned him. You know, pretty good ball placement there by Tavares Jackson. I think it was a good call. Toss to Adrian Peterson. Eventually dragged down by Bradley, a gain of six. 
Peterson has been able to do some amazing things in two years in the NFL over thirty one hundred rushing yards in his first two years in the league and he has the fourth best total after two years in the history of the NFL. The problem is like Chris Myers was talking about before kickoff the fumbles is really the only chink in his armor he has fumbled nine times this year five times during the month of December. Peterson picks up two and that is a problem I mean I know that you know as Chris Myers said that Adrian Peterson isn't happy that he's had to talk more about that than he has the fact that he led the league in rushing this year but you know there's not many coaches I know and haven't been in the league for quite a while myself there's not many coaches in this league that will tolerate a running back that fumbles. Asante Samuel who's been bothered by a bad hip is down. Doesn't look good at all. So they'll check on Samuel and we'll take a break. Mont Fox is sponsored by Hyundai Assurance. We're all in this together and we'll get through it together. By State Farm, proud sponsor of the NFL and the best day of the week. And by FedEx, your ultimate NFL air and ground player. So the Eagles bench, they look at Asante Samuel. And it's third down and a long two for the Vikings. Peterson. Only Dems to beat. Touchdown. Jim Johnson knew that Adrian Peterson was going to get some yards but he did not want to give up the big play and it didn't look like Adrian Peterson even got touched when he went through the line of scrimmage and then once it's on the outside it's a foot race and there's just not many people even with angles that are going to be able to get to Adrian Peterson. And so Adrian Peterson who had only 10 yards on his first six carries goes 40 for the touchdown. And with Longwell about to tack on the extra point, the Vikings have their first lead of the day. The home run hitter for the Minnesota Vikings, Adrian Peterson, just went deep. Touchdown, Vikings, up by one. Seven to six, the Vikings lead with 11:05 left in the half. Wild card weekend drawing to a close. Arizona, they were winners yesterday. San Diego last night. The Baltimore Ravens earlier today. Quentin Demps can't make it to the 30. Marked down at the 28. Benny Sapp on the tackle for the Vikings. So you look at this last drive by by Minnesota. And here's a look at Adrian Peterson after that run and Eric Bieniemy, the running back coach having a conversation with him. And he's tough on Adrian too especially you know we were talking about some of the fumbles that Adrian has had and I asked Tavares Jackson do you ever say anything to Adrian Peterson. You know when he has that happen to him and, and he said no Eric the enemy he does that for everybody that along with Adrian Peterson's father Westbrook nothing Antoine Winfield of all the corners in the NFL Antoine Winfield is right at the top of the list of guys who will stick their nose in there and make a tackle in the run game and now Darren Sharper is slow to get up. The veteran strong safety cannot get to his feet. We'll take a break with 1044 left in the half. Game on Fox is sponsored by Burger King. Have it your way. Down 
Darren Sharper was able to walk off the field. Tyrell Johnson, number 25, takes his spot, second and 10. Pass is into the gut of Kevin Curtis, and what a beautiful throw from McNabb and a first down. Gain of 11. Yeah, perfect throw by Donovan McNabb because it looked like anywhere else, and they're not able to make this completion. Griffin in pretty good coverage, and, and Curtis is able to go down low for it. You know, because of the coverage, anything higher behind him, then an arm's going to be able to knock that ball down. Nice completion there by the Eagles. The Eagles have three first downs. Kevin Curtis has two of them. Pass is broken up. Intended for Deshaun Jackson and Winfield made the play. Tell you, that was a little bit dangerous too. Winfield was right there in the area. It looked like he had a pretty good jump on that. You were talking about him a little bit earlier, Joe, and making the Pro Bowl and the first time, and you know how everybody else on his team celebrated that. You see him jumping the route there on Deshaun Jackson. But one of the really good players in this league for a long, long time, and and, and one of the more complete defensive backs in the league someone who can cover and has big playability and another timeout is taken by the Viking defense they are left with one second and ten when we come back some confusion at the linebacker level prior to that last play Lieber and Greenway and it was Ben Lieber who took the timeout. So second and ten. Vikings have one timeout left in the half. Minnesota up by one. McNabb with all day. Finally throws and hits Avant. Catch is made. Good for five. Third down coming up. They're going to try to do a lot of different things to Jared Allen. They're on the outside with Jason Avant. You're going to see he's going to come down as well and get a little bit of a push there with Trey Thomas and then along with Brent Selleck. I mean, basically three guys trying to slow him down as best they can. And then Avant continued across the field, and then he ultimately was the guy who caught the ball. Working on the ankle of Darren Sharper. It's third down and five for the Eagles. McNabb throws sideline to Sean Jackson, the rookie with a catch. And for a guy who two weeks ago dropped a couple of heartbreakers for the Eagles at Washington in a 10-3 loss, he makes the catch perfect throw out of bounds at the 21. Yeah, you see Deshaun Jackson, he's able to get past McCauley. It looked like McCauley was expecting a little help there from the safety, and he doesn't get it. That's why he was in a trail position. The safety is supposed to be over the top, and that should never have been a throw that Donovan McNabb could fit in there. He did. Good for 34 yards. First down at the Minnesota 21. Back to the run game, and it's Westbrook. But at this point has not been much of a factor that was good for three yards this for Donovan McNabb is his first postseason game since Super Bowl 39 at Jacksonville through three interceptions that day Eagles did not make the playoffs in 05 torn ACL kept him out of the playoffs in 06 Jeff Garcia was the quarterback of the Eagles then last year Philadelphia did not make the postseason so here he is. Guiding the Eagles into the red zone for the first time today. Second and seven. Hand off to Westbrook. One of his better runs. Two yards shy of a first down. Ben Lieber on the tackle for the Vikings. You know, I know Minnesota was disappointed that they weren't going to have Pat Williams. You know, there in the middle. He missed the previous two games, the last two games of the regular season, and, and those were against Atlanta and the New York Giants. Against Atlanta, they did a pretty good job. In, in shutting down the run they struggled a little bit last week against the Giants right now so the Eagles have had a little bit of success when they've run the ball that last one you know they're inside where normally it's manned by Pat Williams third down and two a blitz 
McNabb guns it and the pass is incomplete. Kevin Curtis, the intended receiver, and back onto the field comes the field goal unit for the Eagles. Well, Kevin Curtis on the outside working against Griffin and you know slips but I'm not so sure there was enough there anyway good play by Cedric Griffin knowing that he had the end zone the end line to protect him and was able to position himself pretty well and right now this has been the difference that the Eagles have had to settle for field goals when they've gotten down here and have been unable to have a much success on third downs. 31 yard try and Philadelphia back on top and not only is Akers three for three but he's had plenty of leg every time and he's been right down the middle with all three tries next weekend it's the divisional round of the playoffs across the NFL Carolina Panthers will be, be involved the New York Giants the number one seed and we'll be on the air at Fox Saturday night and early on Sunday. And for the Arizona Cardinals a win at home over the Atlanta Falcons Kurt Warner 271 yards two touchdowns and interception and they dusted off Edger and James and let him <laughs> do the job of running back and he really paid off for the Cardinals and Larry Fitzgerald six catches in a hundred yard day. I think the Cardinals were finally able to to put together an offensive game plan that Ken Wisenhunt has been hoping for now for the past couple of seasons they came out in that game and they got Edron James going early it opened up some plays within the passing game good game there by Kurt Warner excellent game by Larry Fitzgerald and I thought Todd Haley their offensive coordinator did a nice job mixing things up if the Eagles win this game they will be at the Giants if the Vikings win this game they will be at Carolina. Hicks from inside the five. Wow, what a hit by Omar Gaither. And a 25 yard return by Maurice Hicks. Under seven and a half to play in this first half, and we go back to that hit. It was delivered by Brian Dawkins on Adrian Peterson. Went to the sideline for a few plays. Really hadn't done anything, and that's typical of Adrian Peterson. Chip away, chip away, lose a couple yards on a carry here, lose a couple there, and then all of a sudden, bang, he drills you for a 40-yard touchdown. Yeah, run. and and it's the bang that, that Jim Johnson doesn't want to see any more of. You know, there's already been one. He says, hey, we're okay with the three-yard runs, the four occasional five, but, but we cannot give up the big run. So Asante Samuel back in him. there for Philadelphia as Adrian Peterson carries it for six Akeem Jordan on the tackle for the Eagles. And I think that's the uniqueness of of Adrian Peterson though Joe is that you know he is that guy who it seems that every week there's a run like what we just saw to where he'll he'll get out in the open and he'll have a have a big play and a big run and, and when you have a guy like that. Then you're able to get points off of your running game. Generally, teams that run the ball as much as Minnesota do, does has a hard time scoring a lot of points. Over the middle, pass incomplete for Klein Saucer. With Bradley on his back. Third down coming up. As it was, Peterson had the bang with a 40 yard touchdown run, his eighth career touchdown carry of 40 or more yards. And after showing the ball to Quentin Dempsey, almost didn't get into the end zone, but got in and gave the Vikings their longest touchdown run in Minnesota playoff history. But it's 9 7 Eagles, third down and four for the Vikes. Jackson hit as he let it go, and it's intercepted by Asante Samuel. Samuel gets a block and gets the touchdown. The pass was intended for Sidney Rice. Tavares Jackson was hit as he let the ball go. And Asante Samuel, a pro bowler, the big free agent addition who had four picks during the regular season, stepped in front 
for the pick six. Yeah, they get pressure in his face, and then he's trying to throw the out route, and Asante Samuel's cluing him the entire time and just jumps it. One, it's a ball that was thrown behind him, probably because of the pressure, and Chris Clemens just upends Tavares Jackson on the other end. Play, unsportsmanlike conduct against Philadelphia for excessive demonstration after the touchdown. This 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That for Asante Samuel is his eighth career interception for a touchdown. Fourth during the postseason. We saw the hit there on on Tavares Jackson. It looked like he left his feet which is the last thing you want to do and had a pretty good fall there on his back. Akers hits the extra point and in a blink it's 16 to 7. And that's really, Troy, what we came on the air talking about. Tavares Jackson, what he was told by his head coach, Brad Childress, during the week. Don't force it. There's now Jamal Jackson. Limps off the field, but don't force it. These guys are going to throw everything at you. It's okay to punt. It's a, Well, he forced it a little bit here, and Asante Samuel was waiting for it. Yeah, and you see that the ball was thrown behind him by a lot. I mean that was that was a big miss and, and yeah he had some pressure but I think it was just more a result of a poor throw and as we saw Asante Samuel he's got his back to the sideline and he's cluing the quarterback and so as soon as he sees Tavares Jackson set up to deliver the football he's now jumping it and right now I think if you're Minnesota we've seen now Philadelphia jump a few of these routes and they've got to run some double moves they got to get these defensive backs off of these receivers now. Sidney Rice is not a guy with great speed. Asante Samuel probably has looked at this and knows, so he wasn't threatened as he would be by a guy like Bernard Berrien. Before the game, talking to his head coach about his hip, then we saw Asante Samuel go down, and the word was that he re-aggravated the hip injury, came back in, and he was good enough to get the interception and turn it into a quick touchdown. And that's why he was brought in. You know, I mean, you think back to last year, the one thing that the Eagles were unable to do is, is really create takeaways. And Asante Samuel was brought in because of his playmaking ability and just had a big one. Having a kick off from the 15 after the penalty, here is Hicks, and he gets to the 35. We would like to send our greetings out there to those who are watching this game overseas on the American Forces Network. We certainly appreciate all the sacrifices that all of you make for our country day after day. And Santi Samuel is back into the huddle, and the Philadelphia defense is back onto the field. And now Samuel heads out. When they take Samuel out, the Eagles have been going to three safeties, where they have Quentin Demps come in to join Quentin Michael and. Brian Dawkins on first down the handoff is to Peterson and Peterson is swallowed up loses a yard and the reason that they did on that last defensive play is because Minnesota then went to two tight ends and one wide receiver so you're able to that's what Jim Johnson does at one time he would put Sheldon Brown in as the safety and still stick with three defensive backs but you know now because they've gotten such good play you know from their safeties they'll take a corner out and when they take Asante Samuel out that gives you a great idea as to what Jim Johnson thinks of these safeties. Second down and 11 the handoff is to Peterson ran into a wall of bodies and then bounces it outside. Picks up five third down coming up Bunkley on the tackle for Philadelphia. You know Minnesota through this first half has been really good on third down and you know the interception for a touchdown that we just saw you think back to last week with the interception into the end zone against the Giants and, and now you say OK well how's Tavares Jackson going to react to that I thought in the the possession that they had when they went down and scored the touchdown it seemed that he was really settling in and making some good decisions and making some good throws and now he's going to have to find that comfort zone again off of a very bad play. On third down the pass is caught by Berrien. Gets away from Sheldon Brown and he's got a first down for the Vikings at the Philadelphia 31. 
A laser throw from Tavares Jackson. Good for 27 yards. And good, uh, good coverage by Sheldon Brown. You're going to see that Bernard Berrien just wrestles him for this ball. And a ball that was put on him and a good catch by Bernard Berrien. Yeah, I said it before, but you know, so many times when you think of Bernard Berrien and his big play ability, it takes away from really what he is about as a receiver. He's a very good route runner, and as we saw, a nice job competing for the football. Handoff is to Peterson, and Peterson gets back to the line of scrimmage. First guy there was Quentin Michael. You know, pretty remarkable right now in the success that Minnesota has had, you know, on third downs. And one of the reasons why Philadelphia has been so good and has been as dominant as they have been on both sides of the ball has been because their defense has stopped people on third down and their offense has converted. But neither side has been good today. Six for nine on third downs are the Vikings. Philadelphia defensively on third down was allowing 32 percent conversions which was the second best mark in the NFL as Bobby Wade makes the catch and Wade has enough for a Minnesota first down. Well, I like what I'm seeing right now from Tavares Jackson. I mean he's very poised obviously upset about the interception but he comes right back on this series and has made some very nice throw Bobby Wade doing a good job of of finding the zone there and Tavares Jackson putting the ball on him. This is a nice possession right now for Minnesota. Handoff is to Chester Taylor. Taylor picks up eight Stuart Bradley on the tackle and the Vikings are answering the defensive touchdown turned in by Asante Samuel. And I think Minnesota is very fortunate to have a guy like Chester Taylor you know to come in and spell Adrian Peterson from time to time a guy who a couple of years ago had twelve hundred yards rushing could could really start for a lot of teams around the league but he's been a team player disappointed that he hasn't gotten more carries this year but a but a great asset for them especially on third downs. Second down and two handoff is to Taylor sets up first and goal at the six. You know, Anthony Herrera in this offensive line is is getting pretty excited about running the football and. You know, they say Herrera is the most emotional guy along that offensive line. In fact, Brad Childress says we have to remind him that he needs to keep it in check. You know, just a moment ago after that run, he was high-fiving and getting pretty excited. We are at the two-minute warning. Vikings on the move, down by nine. Couple things have happened for the Vikings in this first half. Leslie Frazier defensively has called a very good game. Ryan Westbrook with only six touches all of them on the ground and offensively two big plays by two big play guys Berrien helped to set up this chance and Adrian Peterson with a 40 yard touchdown run. Here's Taylor. Taylor is to the three. And a timeout is taken by Philadelphia. They want to get a stop. Or at the very least leave some time on the clock to get something done before the end of the half. How about last night and what's happened with the San Diego Chargers. They were dead in the water five weeks ago. They've gone on this tear. North Turner is head coach with San Diego 12 and one between December and January. Darren Sproles had an incredible game and Mike Cyphers the punter six punts inside the 20 yard line at Phillip Rivers. You just watch him and you can see he's a leader he's tough and he does what has to be done to get that team uh, into the end zone when need be into field goal range when need be and they get to move on now. Yeah congratulations to the Chargers and they've been in playoff mode now for several weeks and I agree with you on Philip Rivers how he didn't make it into the Pro Bowl is really beyond me but he was sure spectacular last night as was Darren Sproles. Second down and goal. Here's Peterson, second of the day. What an impressive drive put together by the Vikings after the interception for the touchdown. 
down the field into the end zone. Nine plays, 64 yards, and 443 off the clock. And down by two. Well, it's off tackle to the left side. That's the strength of this offensive line behind Steve Hutchinson, Bryant McKinney. And then you add to that Jim Kleinsaucer there at the tight end position. And you see he's able to push his guy out and create a pretty good lane there for Adrian Peterson. This offensive line doing a good job here in this first half, running the football against a defensive unit that's been pretty stingy all season long. Adrian Peterson 12 carries 66 yards two touchdowns averaging five and a half yards per carry first Viking to win the NFL rushing title outrush single handedly the entire Philadelphia Eagles team you see that bottom note that's their other big play guy Berrien the 27 yard catch to help set it up the Eagles with two timeouts left will have a chance to get the ball down the field and make something happen on offense. Saw Andy Reid in his 10th year with the Eagles seventh time he's been in the playoffs. Andy Reid has never lost a playoff opener six for six. Five divisional titles had the streak of four straight championship games got to the Super Bowl in 04 has yet to win the big one. They fake a reverse and Dems makes it to the 25. That's it. Frampton made that last tackle. Tavares Jackson threw the interception. Asante Samuel took it back for the touchdown, but then Troy this has to make Brad Childress feel good. Tavares Jackson turned right around and let his team down the field and into the end zone. And that's what you want to see from your young quarterback when something goes bad. How does he respond to adversity? How does he come back, get in that huddle, look at the other 10 guys knowing that he was the one who made the poor throw that led to the touchdown for Philadelphia? How does he respond? Well, he responded awfully well. Last three Eagle possessions have ended in David Aker field goals. And here's Avant with a catch and room to run. Picks up 13. We go down to the field and Chris Myers. Joe McNabb may be taking advantage of no Darren Sharper. The veteran safety had injured his ankle, tried to come back in for a play, and then came back. They wrapped his ankle, put on a different shoe in great pain. He limped to the locker room. I'm about as much a doctor as Dr. Phil, but I would say he's questionable for the rest of the game considering the pain he's in. Active leader in career interceptions, not in the lineup for the Vikings. First down, Philly. A minute 40 left. And the running game, at least when it's been in the hands of Brian Westbrook, hasn't done much. Buckhalter with a couple of good runs. Westbrook no gain and a timeout taken by the Eagles. Their second timeout with a minute 34 left. Coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, Kurt, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy will have highlights from this wild card weekend. And the Fox Sports ticker will keep you updated with up to the second stats. David Akers, just so you know, during the pregame warmups, was hitting from 60 yards, which means that. If you want to talk about a 60 yarder that means getting the ball to the Minnesota 42. Well, he's got plenty of leg. I mean there's no doubt about that. I know that the Eagles with the amount of time that there is on the clock they, they're hoping for more than that but they'd certainly be happy if they're able to get three more before the half. A blitz over the middle Selleck the tight end and Selleck is a yard short of a first down. You got Benny Sapp a little slow getting back to the defensive side of the ball. The, the Vikings brought blitz McNabb sees it and is able to get the, the hole in the defense. The Vikings were not set defensively. Here is a pass intercepted by Griffin. I don't understand that play call third down and one. The defense was really not set for the Vikings and the Eagles air it out for Kevin Curtis and Cedric Griffin 
comes down with the interception. Yeah, Cedric Griffin, he was playing wide receiver on that. You see that he was in perfect position to make the play. Kevin Curtis was in the trail position and just never could get up on top. You know, I agree. I mean, they were a little confused defensively with Sapp being injured and then trying to get back to his side of the ball. And it looked like they could have handed it off or McNabb might have been able to even sneak it for a first down. It was third and short. Instead, he tries to take one down the field and Cedric Griffin there to make a play. So now the Vikings get it with a minute 10 remaining. One timeout left and they will start their own 13. Handoff is to Chester Taylor. And Taylor no game. Chris Gokong on the stop and the crowd a little restless with that play call. Yeah they <laughs> yeah well you know that's easy for the fans to get upset but I think right now with where the Vikings are you know inside the 20 yard line and with just one timeout and 45 seconds and counting down I think that Brad Childress is smart now they may try a screen or something here to see if maybe they can get one big play to put them in position. Quick set up and throw and the pass is behind Bobby Wade. Well now it's third down and ten and if the Eagles can get a stop here if it's an incomplete pass or if they have to burn a timeout they may have a chance to get something done again here before the half. Yeah and I would be shocked if if Brad Childress doesn't run the ball here. And if they weren't going to really try to go for it, they should have run the play each down and they would have exhausted Philadelphia's timeouts and they would have been able to run out the clock. So now they do run it. It's Chester Taylor and timeout taken by Philadelphia. The crowd here is booing. And you're right. I mean, the second down play doesn't make any sense. If you're willing to just sit on it, be down by two at the half, why did they throw the ball on second down? Now by leaving a timeout Philadelphia will at least get a chance to do something before the end of the half. Yeah, And you can see by the discussion there that Brad Childress is having that you know I think he acknowledges that that was a mistake if you run it there on first down and you don't get anything out of it then you better run it on second down and third down considering Philadelphia you know could run out of timeouts and then you could run out the clock instead Philadelphia is going to get the ball and still have some time and add to that this is a Vikings team that we've already talked about is the worst punt cover team in the NFL Deshaun Jackson has a 62 yard punt return in this game so they'll be tested here Cluey hits it Jackson on the return and he is brought down by Greenway a 13 yard return 18 seconds left. And if you believe free game warm ups and a 60 yard field goal hit by David Akers the Eagles have to go 16 yards with no timeouts left to give Akers a chance at just that yardage. Yeah and generally defenses in this situation they're, they're so inclined to try to keep the receiver in bounds that then the weakness of the defense in the zones becomes in the seams in the middle of the field. And the Eagles can exploit that and still get up and clock it and maybe have time for one more quick pass. This is Westbrook and Westbrook hops out of bounds with a nine and a half yard gain. Thirteen seconds left and now the Eagles are getting closer to that range. Here is David Akers during the pregame warm ups had plenty of leg and a little smile after hitting from 60 yards. Well and that's not unusual last week we had their game with the Dallas Cowboys and in pregame warm ups he was doing the same thing. His career long is 57. It has to be a quick play. McNabb overthrows Westbrook. The ball right now is at the 46 a 60 yarder means the ball would get to the 42 so they are four yards away from that with eight seconds to go in the half it's third down and one and no timeouts remaining. Well I think they can get themselves in a position because you know it's not too difficult in this situation to overload a zone and then be able to get the ball on a five ten yard you know 
seven yard completion and get out of bounds but they're going to have to get out of bounds if they complete this pass. McNabb Westbrook trying to get there and he will not what a play by Greenway. And that means that the half will end 16 14 Philadelphia. Chad Greenway just got enough of Brian Westbrook and there will be no long field goal try at the end of the half. The visa halftime is coming up. Good game here at the Metrodome. Two point Philadelphia lead. It's wild card weekend on Fox. Minnesota Vikings will start this second half with the football. And Adrian Peterson is getting set to go. David Akers will kick it away. And Maurice Hicks is waiting deep for Minnesota. We know the matchups in the AFC next weekend Baltimore at Tennessee, San Diego at Pittsburgh. The Vikings win this game they will be at Carolina if the Eagles win this game they will be at a longtime divisional rival New York Giants. Picks from the one. Oh what a good play downfield. And that play was made by Kyle Eckel, a 14 yard return and we go down to the field and Pam Oliver. Well Joe Andy Reid very specific about what he wants done in the second half. He said first of all our offense has to sustain some of its drives and it says red zone wise we've got to come away with touchdowns defensively. He also said that that third down conversion issues that they're having against the Vikings that's got to improve it. As a matter of fact he said we need to improve on every down Asante Samuel he went in early for some treatment he is good to go but it's bound to be an issue for him all day back to you all right Pam thank you it's first down from the 15 and play action from Jackson he dumps it off to Klein saucer and a nice play to start this second half of 16 yards for the Vikings down to Chris Myers Joe that's exactly what Brad Childress said he wanted to do at the half he wanted to move the pocket a lot more for Tavares Jackson because even though they did OK on third down he wants better yardage on first down even Tavares running the ball wouldn't be a bad thing thumbs down on Darren Sharper he is questionable their veteran leader in the secondary with an ankle injury all right Chris first play from scrimmage 16 yards from Tavares Jackson to Jim Klein saucer. And the handoff is to Adrian Peterson tries the left side Bunkley got in there first no gain. Mike Patterson eventually on the tackle. You know I think if you look at Philadelphia defensively there in that first half and the job that they did is in terms of stopping the run. You know you could argue that well they did pretty well with the exception of a couple runs but. That as we talked about a little bit earlier Joe that really in essence is what this Minnesota team is about. I mean yeah you can corral and you can hold them to two or three yards but then you get the 40 yard run like we saw from Adrian Peterson and the good run there by Chester Taylor. Here's a toss to Peterson over the right side a gain of two Stuart Bradley. A very good young middle linebacker in his second year out of Nebraska laid the big hit on Adrian Peterson. He's really had a good year for this team and. You know last year he got his opportunity he made the most of it they knew coming into camp that they were going to move Omar Gaither then to the weak side and make him the starter and and Jim Johnson couldn't be happier with the job that he has done thinks he's going to be a real superstar in this league and as well as he has played this year he's not going to he's going to do it he's going to get a lot better in the years to come third down and eight pressure on Jackson Klein saucer underneath another big play to Klein saucer into Philadelphia territory. 17 yards brought down by Akeem Jordan. I'll tell you Daryl Bevel the offensive coordinator for the Vikings really doing a good job of mixing it up. We heard Brad Childress say that he wanted to move the pocket a little bit. They've done that. 
Now they come back with a screen pass. They get it to Klein Saucer. They mix in some of the runs here on this first possession of the second half. Pretty good stuff. Right now, Philadelphia defensively, not real sure exactly what they're going to get. Minnesota now 7 of 11 on third downs. Here's Chester Taylor. And he gets ripped down. A penalty flag on the far side of the field. And it's against Philadelphia. And they get Trent Cole. Microphone's not working, but Trent Cole was guilty, and that's the fourth Eagle penalty of this game. Minnesota has yet to draw a yellow flag, first and five. And a good play by Mike Patterson. No game. Yeah, those long runs that we saw from from Minnesota. You know, a lot of the run blitzes as we saw there, and you know, then it's a matter of gap control, and that's what happened. They just get out of their gaps, and and as we know, I mean, it doesn't take much for Adrian Peterson. You you get one defender making a wrong move, and he can take it to the house. Second down and five. Chester Taylor nowhere to go. A loss of about half a yard on the play. So now third down. Well, it's a good job right now for Philadelphia, considering that it was first and five just a moment ago, and now it's third and five. And you know, as we've talked about so many times, you know, these games come down to who can convert on third down. Minnesota did a great job of that in the first half, and now Philadelphia has a chance to play on third down as we've seen over the previous weeks. Coming on a blitz and the ball is knocked out. Tavares Jackson able to get back on top of it. Brian Dawkins coming on a blitz got his hand in there and knocked it out of the right hand of Tavares Jackson. A loss of 12 on the play and it's fourth down. It's amazing how many times we see this from Brian Dawkins when he comes in on the blitz. I mean he really is trying to go for the arm with the ball. And he has a chance to knock it out and a good job by Tavares Jackson being able to get back on it. So the punt from Cluey. Deshaun Jackson from inside the 10. Well covered by the Minnesota Vikings. Then he sapped the first guy there, and now they're going to throw a late flag. Just a four yard return by Deshaun Jackson after a 47 yard punt. Holding, receiving team. Number 37, this penalty be assessed half the distance to the goal. First down. That's Sean Considine, who is guilty of a hold. Good play on third down by Brian Dawkins. Nothing new. He does it week after week. Knocked it out of the hand of Tavares Jackson and forced the punt. You want to dance? What you got? Want to get away? Now you can. With Southwest Airlines Internet Specials, you can fly to destinations nationwide for just $49 to $99. Purchased by January 19th. Low fares, no hidden fees. Discipline investing. At T. Rowe Price, it's not just about the short term. It's about a steady, long-term approach. For a 10-year period, over 70% of our mutual funds beat their Lipper average. Low-cost mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a complete prospectus or profile with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. You know, the beer you choose says a lot about you. You want friendly, not pretentious. Classic, never trendy. 
You want a real American beauty. Are you talking about... Driving up to the lake for the weekend when suddenly a big boat pulls up next to you and you notice, hey, it's yours. That's when it occurs to you that while having a lot of towing power is nice, a little control to go with it would be great too. Enter the all-new 09 F-150. It's got the most towing and now an advanced trailer sway control system. And guess what? It's standard. Anchors away, baby. It's not just a new truck. It's a new F-150. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. By KFC, it's a flavor blitz. KFC's honey barbecue wings have three layers of flavor. And by the all-new 09 F-150. It's not just a new truck, it's a new F-150. Andy Reid's offense, their worst starting field position of the day. Just inside their own five after the hold. Called against Considine. McNabb throws short of Matt Schobel. And here is the penalty that backed up the Eagles. Yeah, they call Sh Sean Considine on, on a hold against Vinnie Churchill, and, and I don't see anything there. It looked like Churchill just kind of lost his balance and went down. But that was a big penalty. And that's why they're backed up right now inside the five yard line. Second and ten. You got to be real careful if you're Donovan on that last play. They bring pressure, and you obviously can't afford a sack back in the end zone. If you're going to throw, you got to get it out. Hand off to Westbrook, and there's nothing there. A loss of one. Robinson made the play. We talked about it a little bit earlier. Robinson coming in and making the start for Ray Edwards, and a guy who was projected as the starter coming into the season prior to the trade for Jared Allen. But a nice guy to have when you've got Jared Allen who's been banged up for a good part of the season and then with Ray Edwards coming down that he's able to step in and he's played well today. Throws and completes for a first down to Avant. What a big completion by Donovan McNabb. 11 yards and a first down. Well, Jared Allen, he's here, and he's going to loop around here. And as you're going to see, it gets bottled up. You've got the linebackers, Ben Lever, and everybody else. The, the line does, does a good job of just solidifying the protection. And what a big first down. Stumbled getting it back into the arms of Westbrook. Picks up to Tyrell Johnson, who has taken over for Darren Sharper in to make the stop. Well, this interior group for Minnesota has been pretty solid. You know, we know that Pat Williams is not playing, but Fred Evans has gotten his opportunity to come in and, and he's held up well. Terrell Buckalter had a nice run, but other than that one run that Buckalter has had. They've struggled running the football. Second and eight. McNabb throws. Pass is caught by Selleck. Brought down by Winfield. Out across the 30. A gain of 12 and another first down. Donovan McNabb against Minnesota in his career, including the playoffs, is 4-0. and Eight touchdowns compared to no interceptions and he has made two big throws on this first possession of the second half. You know the Vikings have brought Napoleon Harris quite a bit on the blitz and more times than not when he has come he's been able to get pressure on McNabb. Little shoulder fake. Here's Selleck, and Brent Selleck has a first down up near midfield. They're going to mark him right at the 50, a 19 yard completion for Selleck, who has taken over at tight end for the injured L.J. Smith. I tell you, that's a, that's a throw now a couple of times that Donovan has made that, that really should not be there based on coverage. You know, Tyrell Johnson, the safety, we saw it earlier on the throw to Deshaun Jackson. 
But Tyrell Johnson, who's in for Darren Sharper, he has not been able to get over the top and take away that throw along the sideline in that cover two zone. Brent Selig with four catches, 48 yards. That leads this team. Here's the other tight end, Schobel. He's good for eight. And the Eagles are able to move the ball and really have at different times in this game without much from Brian Westbrook. Well, he's going to get a lot of attention, and you know that going in. And so as much as they try to move him around, sometimes they move him around and he's able to draw some coverage his way or they put him in the backfield, and that's why sometimes the ball is able to get dispersed to a number of other players. Quick setup and throw, and that ball is knocked down. Kevin Curtis, the intended receiver, and so now McNabb, who has completed passes to eight different receivers in this game, he's faced with third and three. And that really is, is when the Eagles are at their best. I mean, so, so much is talked about them not having a go-to number one guy, but when, when Donovan is able to spread the ball out, because he has a lot of confidence in, in all of these guys, and they all do things, each one has certain skills that they do best. That's when this Eagles offense is able to roll. Third down and three. McNabb throws behind his receiver, Avant, who makes the play five yards in a first down. So another third down conversion by Donovan McNabb in this Philly offense. And Jason Avant doing a good job running away from the defender. And Donovan able to to hang in there you can see that he's throwing it a little bit off balance a ball that's behind Avant he's able to catch that and run and pick up some pretty good yardage but a, but a real nice catch by Avant on a ball that was thrown behind him Avant with two third down conversions on this drive it's first and ten at the Minnesota 38. They do reverse it to Deshaun Jackson. Well played by Jared Allen. A gain of only two. <laughs> I think Jared Allen kind of enjoyed that. <laughs> I think he enjoys a lot. <laughs> Carolina Panthers will be on display next week. The New York Giants will be on display as well. We're on the air with divisional round football here on Fox Saturday night. And early on Sunday, we just do not know the matchups yet. Second and eight. Handoff is to Westbrook. There is nowhere to go. Cedric Griffin made the play. what this Minnesota defense has done in stopping the run first team since the merger in 1970 to lead the league defending the run three straight years they average allowing just under 77 yards per game and Leslie Frazier has done a terrific job directing this defense third and seven. McNabb runs out of time and the pass is incomplete. They're going to say that McNabb's it's a, sack. it's a sack. It's no incomplete pass. And that's big. They're going to say that McNabb's forward progress was stopped so he doesn't get rid of the football. And that takes it all the way back to the 43 yard line. And that was Chad Greenway and Napoleon Harris on the linebacker blitz and and they've had success with that move. Napoleon Harris the free guy and was able to get enough and it, it warranted the official call to the sack. It's a loss of eight and it took Philadelphia out of field goal range. Bobby Wade with a fair catch at the 10. So because this was a sack and not an incomplete pass, a loss of eight, no field goal try, still a two-point game. Well, the Eagles didn't score on that last possession. They did a nice job of switching the field position, winning that little battle. They started at their own five. And after
after the punt. Minnesota will start with it at their own 10. Hand off is to Taylor. Taylor picks up six. And so now Minnesota with the football and we'll see how they do against this Philadelphia defense and uh, really nothing surprising so far in this game we've seen good defensive play from both sides and uh, I guess on that last possession only 41 yards all game for Philadelphia running the football. Yeah which isn't a, a big surprise I mean and, and Andy Reid and Marty Mornwig they're trying to stick with it but I think that the further we get into this game the harder it's going to be for them to do that and as we've seen I mean. This game's really going to come down to who makes the fewest mistakes here in this second half. That's Adrian Peterson on second and four picks up three third down and short coming up for the Vikings. And I think as you said Joe I mean defensively it's been a it's been a real battle. You know Minnesota has done a has done a good job. Leslie Frazier and the defensive scheme that he put together and doing it shorthanded again this week without Pat Williams but you know he has also some good players to work with. And Jared Allen and Kevin Williams and certainly Antoine Winfield and others. There's big Pat Williams. And off is to Peterson and Adrian Peterson is brought down by Gokong. Look to be short of first down yardage he is. You see him right here and he does a good job of scraping. And he's able to just get a play. You see Peterson, he's trying to get underneath it. And just a good job there by Philadelphia to stretch it out. And Peterson trying to be patient and come underneath that and find a crease. But good gap control. That's what we talked about. That's what Jim Johnson has talked about all week. And for them to be able to stop them on third and short, a good play. Cluey with another punt. Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson hops out of bounds at the 40 and there was only one player over on this side of the field for Minnesota a 30 yard return so one for 31 for 62 returning punts for the rookie Deshaun Jackson after that 30 yard return Deshaun Jackson went right up into the face of head coach Brad Childress of the Minnesota Vikings. Brad's had a few players challenge him this year. <laughs> a little look back from Childress like get him out of here. I think these last two possessions could end up being very important during the second half and maybe overall in the course of this game Troy when you think about the Eagles the last time they had it they were pinned at their own five. They at least got it into Minnesota territory pinned the Vikings back at their own ten. Got a quick three and out and now after another good punt return by Deshaun Jackson they've got the ball second down and eight at the Minnesota 38 up by two. Well this is a when you get field position like this for an offense I mean it's one where you have to come away with some points and and the Eagles having a hard time really getting this thing in the end zone. This is an area where they need to be able to do that. This one's knocked away by Jared Allen in Minnesota. Recovers. Jared Allen got the right hand on the football. Fred Evans recovered for the Vikings, who take over at their own 46, down two. The first year it's been in a Vikings uniform for Jared Allen. 14 and a half sacks and now a forced fumble as this pass is out of the reach of Bobby Wade. And here is the Jared Allen play on McNabb. Well, Jared Allen, he comes by Trey Thomas to the outside and, and like so many of the great pass rushers, immediately goes at Donovan McNabb's arm. And then you see. Andy Reid talking to Donovan about what exactly happened. I know in talking with the coaches prior to this game, you know, Trey Thomas was going to get some help on some of the shorter throws, but on the deeper drops, you know, 
or on the shorter throws they were not going to give him help but on the deeper drops they wanted to that time they didn't give him any help and they paid for it. Shanko is down we'll take a break. Donovan McNabb has turned it over twice today the first half interception now the fumble last five regular season games a total of two turnovers. Second down and ten and the handoff is to Peterson. Peterson fights his way to the forty nine of Philadelphia picks up five Akeem Jordan and Brian Dawkins and on the stop it's third down coming up for Minnesota. Well Adrian Peterson he had a trying to keep him front side he cuts back and Dawkins and the rest of them are there to make the play but not until after he's picked up five yards. You know talking with Jim Johnson there at the half and knowing how critical these third downs are another big one here. And that'll do it for the first three quarters in this wild card matchup between Minnesota and Philadelphia. Eagles lead by two Vikings with the ball third and five when we start the fourth back after this. Typical game for Peterson chipping away at it chipping away at it the big 40 yard run 40 of his 76 yards total two touchdowns on the sideline on third down and five Jackson looking for somewhere to go with it that ball was hit maybe on its way out in the pass incomplete for Berrien that ball came out funny I don't know if somebody got their hand on it or not there was a ton of pressure on Tavares Jackson when he let it go and the Vikings now seven for 14 on third down yeah, Tavares Jackson actually had time but he just couldn't find anywhere to throw the football you see the little bit of a slant and go there by Bernard Barry and he's able to get one on one on Quentin Michael but good coverage on the back end there. Deshaun Jackson has been a factor returning punts. He'll let this one go and it takes a bounce. And is kept alive. The two officials are looking at one another and trying to determine if that ball was tapped. While well, McCauley had his foot on the line I don't think his foot was on the line Marcus McCauley but they have yet to really determine where the ball is going to be placed. Number 21 went into the end zone did not reestablish with two feet then touched the ball therefore ruling is a touchback. So that's First McCauley. Down the 20 yard line. That's McCauley and Philadelphia will take over at their own 20. So there's McCauley into the end zone. They say he didn't establish his feet back in play. Philly has it at their 20. This is sponsored by Visa. No matter how you prepare for game day, Visa is the way to go. By Subway, home of the famous always made fresh $5 foot long. By the 2009 Cadillac CTS. And by Budweiser Select. Full flavor, 99 calories. The exception to the rule. During the break Brad Childress threw the challenge flag. The call was that Marcus McCauley did not establish both feet back in the field of play before he tapped the football. I think that's a pretty definitive replay that once he was in the end zone then he got back out of the end zone. And it certainly looked like McCauley did what he had to do to establish both feet in tap the football. And we'll get the call now from Tony Correnti. After reviewing the play, the Minnesota player who went into the end zone did reestablish back in the field of play. With two feet. He batted the ball forward. The ball will be placed what was first touched at the four yard line. So instead of starting at their own 20, Andy Reid's offense is backed up at their own four. Well, and when they were waiting to see what the ruling on the field was going to be, both Andy Reid and Brad Childress had the red flag out. Both of them were going to challenge the play regardless of what the call was. And every other angle that we had was not conclusive, but a good shot on the last one showing that McCauley had definitely established himself back in the field of play before touching the ball. 
So after a scoreless third quarter. This crowd lets the Eagles hear it starting at their own four. Handoff is to Westbrook running right. Picked up one to the five. Good play made by Benny Sapp. I tell you what you talk about loud being down there in that end of the field backed up into the end zone you know, not able to use hard count you just really got to get up and get the ball snapped because these offensive linemen are not going to be able to stay in their stance for long without getting jumpy Brian Westbrook with 14 touches in this game and 27 yards he has been shut down by the Minnesota defense A blitz, second and nine, pass caught by Avant, who comes up with another th conversion. He gets a first down. He had a couple of third down conversions the last time the Eagles had it. That was good for 11. Well, you talk about a big conversion here and giving yourself a little bit of room in the event that you have to punt. Avant just settles down right there in the hole. It's a pretty good look right there of what McNabb saw when he turned it loose to Avant. Catches today, just 32 all year for Jason Avon. McNabb back to the middle of the field, and the pass is caught by Reggie Brown. Good for nine. Well, we saw what happened last time they singled up on Jared Allen with Trey Thomas, and this time they're going to come out with a back, and they're going to chip him with Corell Buckhalter. And that provides McNabb some time. And that's an area of the field right there at the linebacker level over the ball where we've seen a number of completions here in this game. 18th career multiple sack game for Jared Allen. Sixth time in his last 11 games. Has two today. Second and one. And Westbrook pounds forward for a first down. Three yards and a first down for Philadelphia. down McNabb throws to a wide open Kevin Curtis and the receiver who missed seven games during this season first six with a sports hernia then missed a game later in the year with a calf injury had just 33 catches this season makes this grab has another Philadelphia first down and this has been an impressive start to a drive it began at the Eagle four yard line not easy to do but right now you can tell that you know Donovan he's seeing the field pretty clearly and, and these corners on the outside are, are giving the receivers some some real respect with the depths they're playing off of him. Westbrook gets back to the line of scrimmage first guy there was Jimmy Kennedy former first round pick of the St. Louis Rams who fizzled in St. Louis and now is getting a chance to play because of the injuries up front to Pat Williams and Ray Edwards. Well I'll tell you I'm a little impressed with uh, with Andy Reid and Marty Morningwig and what they have done. They have not run the ball very well in this ball game but yet unlike other times when Andy would be very quick to get away from it he's at least continued to try to mix in enough running so that they don't put this offensive line in a real bind throwing it every down. Look like a false start against Philadelphia. False start, offense number 59. Five yard penalty remains second down. That's Nick Cole. I don't know if that last play was going to turn into a trick play or not, but after the play had been blown dead, Brian Westbrook took the initial throw, then threw it down the field. 
And maybe not. That might have been out of frustration. And why not? He's had 14 carries, 18 <laughs> yards. I was going to say, why would he clue in this Minnesota defense at that play? Is there and Andy's trying to calm him down. Yeah, I don't think he would have. Second and 15. Back to the far side of the field, and it's Curtis who's dragged down from behind by Griffin. Gain of eight. We were talking about Kevin Curtis a little bit earlier and the amount of time that he has missed this year. And you know, I, I really think he's a he's a really good player. And when he's put in the right role, I, I think he's it's fair to say he's a great player, but they've missed him when he hasn't been on the field. Third down and seven. McNabb has his arm hit. And the pass is incomplete. Hank Basket had a real chance at a catch. Brian Robinson hit the arm of McNabb when he let it go, and it's fourth down. Well, just the pressure. They want to give the chip to Robinson, but he puts a spin move and comes underneath Runyon. And it looked like they were going to go to Avon on the outside, and he had him open. But as you said, Basket just missed time to jump. You know, the ball comes up and, and he had a legitimate chance of being able to make that play. He had enough yardage for a first down but couldn't pull it in and now Sab Rocca punts it with Barry and waiting deep. And it's out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. They will mark it at the 19. Donovan McNabb took the hit from Robinson. The pass incomplete. Vikings have it back. Still down two. Why do we show up five hours before kickoff? Order every game. Dress like our dads. And sit in 10 degree weather on our anniversary. Why? Because this game is ours. Visa. For game day, it's the way to go. You click web, and let's be honest, you're not sure what to expect. But this browser sure looks like, well, a browser. And everything seems so fast. Okay, but what are the chances it'll work like this where you want it to? Gotta like those odds. Only Verizon Wireless, America's largest 3G network, has the world's first touchscreen BlackBerry. Verizon Wireless. No preservatives, no fillers, no no-nos. The only thing in our beef is beef. Sink your teeth into that. That's what we're made of. It gets an EPA estimated 20 miles per gallon city. Better than this Mini Cooper. The luxury eight passenger Cadillac Escalade hybrid. Made by GM. Surprised? The Hybrid is just the latest addition to the legendary Escalade family. Qualified buyers can get 1.9% APR GMAC financing for 60 months, plus $3,250 bonus cash on all new 2008 Cadillac Escalade non-hybrid models. Offer ends January 5th. Brian Robison got the start in place of the injured Ray Edwards, who's out with a bad left knee, and Troy's played it terrific game and the concern by Leslie Frazier coming into this game was how well he'll he would hold up he's held up just fine here is Peterson over the left side picks up five down to Chris Myers Joe the defensive line of the Vikings gaining more and more confidence to, despite being bound a, a couple of starters Jared Allen in the first quarter had pressure and defensive line coach Carl Dunbar said not only pressure on Donovan McNabb but we see him holding the ball rather loosely and if you get to him you can knock the ball loose and so far not a lot of rest for this defensive line but they're keeping the heat and the pressure on Donovan McNabb yeah you can see Donovan when he goes to drop he always has been inclined to, to really stretch the ball out behind him before turning it loose and and boy they've gotten some strips on him because of it play action from Jackson and the pass is complete to Sidney Rice 14 yard completion to Sidney Rice 
You see the cushion that Asante Samuel is a get, is giving Sidney Rice. Earlier in the game, we saw him jumping the route on Sidney Rice. And as I was saying at that time, Sidney Rice, who is coming off a, a knee injury and is still really not 100% and, and not a real speed guy, I'm surprised that Asante has now elected to play him a little softer. Handoff is to Peterson. Chris Gokong is there, a gain of only one. You know, pretty interesting when you when you look at these two offenses and, and who's had the problems protecting the quarterback coming into this game the the Eagles had done a terrific job and Donovan McNabb had done a great job of getting the ball out and not absorbing a lot of sacks but not only has he been sacked three times he's been knocked down a bunch as well here in this game and Tavares Jackson on the other hand he's been able to get it out for the most part. Looked like a false start on Berrien. False start, offense number 87. Five yard penalty remains second down. A little flinch by Bernard Berrien, and that is the first Viking penalty of this game. It's only one sack for this Eagles defense, three for the Minnesota defense. on a blitz the pass is nearly picked off by Sheldon Brown stepped in front of Bernard Berrien and it was right into his hands you know Sheldon Brown had a big interception last week against the Cowboys but overall he's just not a guy who's been able to come down with many of these opportunities and it hits him right in the hands and that's now about the third time one of them going for the touchdown with Asante Samuel but a couple of other times including that last play we've seen Tavares Jackson throwing the ball behind a receiver and when it's an outside receiver and you're throwing it behind him to the inside it is very dangerous. So it's third and 13. Another blitz and Jackson throws out of the reach of Shenko. Darren Howard was coming on a blitz. He was the first one through. He wasn't alone. Well, here they come, and the Eagles are coming after him. And Tavares Jackson, you know, does a good job of recognizing it and at least getting out of the pocket. But, you know, that's one he's got to let go a little bit sooner. Vikings now 0 for their last four on third downs. They started 7 for 11. And Cluey with another punt. Bounce in front of Jackson and bounce backward. Down by Vinnie Churchu, a punt of only 36 yards. Eagles defense does its job. Philly has the ball and a two point lead. Hey, Coach Mora, we're going to throw a playoffs party in my backyard. Big screen TV, lots of cold, refreshing Coors Light. You kidding me? No, we're even going to play touch football with the neighbors. <laughs> I don't care. Who you play? Coach, there's going to be girls at our party. You think we should talk to them about the playoffs? Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about it. Playoffs? Playoffs? Frost Brewed Coors Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL playoffs. Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? Hey, okay, okay. Don't talk Forget about it. I brought it playoffs? up. It goes 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds, making it faster than a BMW 550i. And it's more fuel efficient on the highway. The Pontiac G8 GT. Made by GM. Surprised? Or get a 2009 Pontiac G8 starting at 25479 during the Buick Pontiac GMC Red Tag Event. Plus get the best coverage in America. Hurry, Red Tag Event ends January 5th. The principles of three economics. Supply. Can I make double stack? Demand. Uh. Wendy's Three Economics, featuring the double stack, one of three way better sandwiches for 99 cents each. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. I think you are the one for me. Here is where you ought to be. I can't get enough of your love. Yeah. I can't get enough, enough of your love. Hey, let me tell you, boy, I hope and pray each day I live. You'd have me stay. Now, 
There is Taylor Hicks, who was the American Idol winner, season five, sang our national anthem before today's game. Did a great job. And here is this Eagle offense starting at their own 29. Westbrook on a screen. Good play by the Eagles. Well blocked, and Westbrook breaks loose. Looking for the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Held down all day, and Brian Westbrook takes it all the way, 71 yards for the touchdown. Tell you when they initially set that thing up, Joe, it didn't really look like it was going to go anywhere, but then they were able to get some blockers. Nick Cole, in particular, was able to get out in front. And then Westbrook, you know, you hear it time after time talking to these opposing defensive coaches, we cannot allow Westbrook in space. And that's why. This for a while had turned into a battle of these two defensive coordinators, Jim Johnson, you just saw Leslie Frazier. Brian Westbrook, who had not been a factor, first 16 touches, a total of 32 yards, goes 71 on the screen for the touchdown. Yeah, initially you're going to see Westbrook, he gets out in front of Nick Cole and his blockers, but then he sets them up, and Nick Cole finishes them off. I mean, Westbrook starts up inside, realizes he's got help to the outside, and bounces it and allows Nick Cole then to clean it up for him, and then it's just a matter of running with the football in the open field and seeing what you can do with it and not many people are going to be able to catch him in that situation. Kevin Curtis blocked downfield Deshaun Jackson got out in front of Benny Sapp. So the two receivers helped to convoy Brian Westbrook into the end zone and I'm going to say it again. Westbrook who was the focus of any defense when you play the Eagles first 16 touches 32 total yards goes 71 yards on that screen for the touchdown to make it 23 14 with 637 left in the fourth quarter. He's like Adrian Peterson you know I mean you, you think you've got him bottled up throughout the day and you just keep giving him the ball you keep calling his number and at some point something's going to break. The other part of it was Kevin Williams came so close to blowing that play up number 93 for the Vikings and he just stumbled at the last moment as Maurice Hicks returns it. 25 yard return and now the Vikings have it trailing by nine. So every time you and I do a Philadelphia Eagles game we talk to the other defensive coordinator and the first guy they talk about I, I always think a great blush of the Washington Redskins. He is the most dangerous player in the NFL talking about Brian Westbrook and he just proved why with uh, with one touch and one long run. No doubt and uh, a nice job of execution and the offensive line not taking anything away from those guys. They did a really nice job. Kevin Curtis out there. But we saw how Brian Westbrook can really make an offensive line or a blocker look pretty good. Bobby Wade tried a one handed catch couldn't haul it in second and ten. Now you take another look at that and and you see how he's able to just set up the blocks and how he brings everybody to the inside and then as he bounces it to the outside now he made some people miss as well. You know they're running the football and the convoy and you know look who's there chasing him for the Minnesota Vikings Jared Allen all the way into the end zone. Second down and 10 for the Vikings. And Jackson ends up on his back. Clemens was in his face and Brian Dawkins almost came up with what could have been a back breaking interception and touchdown. Now Dawkins he's on the blitz and Chris Clemens is able to to get the big hit on him and initially it looked that if after Dawkins got his hand on the ball that he would be able to bring that one in and Chris Clemens I mean geez he's such a versatile a versatile athlete and then thinking back to the game that he had last week and he's following it up with another good game here. So now third down and ten for Minnesota. This one off his back foot downfield for Wade and that's out of everybody's reach. There were three Eagles defenders around Bobby Wade and it's a three and out after 
after the 71 yard touchdown by Westbrook. I just think Jim Johnson is so good at really recognizing momentum shifts and when he senses that I mean it becomes a feeding frenzy and you could tell that you know they had got the crowd out of it and they were going to take advantage of what had happened on the offensive side of the ball and they do a nice job of creating a three and out. You see Brian Dawkins we asked Jim Johnson what it is that he has in his defense that lets him blitz and do what he does and he said my safeties and that certainly means Brian Dawkins first and foremost. Here is Deshaun Jackson this time it's well covered by the Vikings downfield just a three yard return after a 53 yard punt number 20 is doing it again this week the heart and soul of that Eagle defense Nissan Versa 34 MPG and the largest passenger interior volume in its class for under $10,000. How can you spend nine hours this weekend watching football? Easy. Skip the Sunday afternoon game. Here's to a weekend of great games. Miller Lite. Great taste, less filling. Ditch the bag. Get the box. The KFC Fully Loaded Box. Packed with two new original recipe strips, a new original recipe snacker, drumstick or thigh, two sides, biscuit, large drink. That's a lot of food. I didn't kill her. He can spot a lie in the blink of an eye. He's lying. Dr. Cal Lightman created the science of deception detection. The average person tells three lies per 10 minutes conversation. And with his team of experts. Have you ever been to a club called Centurion? That guy's lying his ass off. There's no truth they can't find. The question is never simply if someone is lying, it's why. No secret they can't discover. Body language tells the truth. Even from the grave. No mystery they can't solve. I didn't kill Miss McCartney. But you know who did. Tim Roth. What am I supposed to believe about you? Whatever you want. It's what everyone else does. Lie to Me. Series premiere Wednesday, January 21st on Fox. There's that matchup, Troy, you talked about coming in. Jim Johnson, defensive coordinator for the Eagles. Tavares Jackson, the young quarterback for the Vikings. And so far, Jim Johnson has won that battle. Yeah, but you wouldn't tell looking at him, would you? No. He looks defeated over there. <laughs> Nine point Eagles lead, and now Westbrook trying to get his ground game going. Picks up two. Benny Sapp made the play, and McNabb has had this sort of day one touchdown, one interception, eight different receivers. And while Philadelphia at the wide receiver position didn't have any. Individual make 70 catches or have a thousand yard season as a group. Well, 197 receptions over 2600 yards both ninth best in the NFL. They don't have one stud but they have a group that McNabb will spread it around to. Yeah and that's the way Andy Reid prefers it. Second and seven. What a good play made by Madiu Williams. Clock continues to wind. Brent Selleck was just smacked. Yeah, they tried to go back to the screen. A couple problems. Minnesota was prepared for it, and they weren't throwing it to Brian Westbrook. You know, you see Medea Williams, he just sees it all the way and is able to come up and, and make, make a hit on Selleck before he's able to even get turned around. I think right now Andy Reid knows his defense is playing great. He's got a nine point lead. You know don't take any unnecessary chances. I wouldn't be shocked to see him. Some safe play maybe even run the ball keep the, keep the clock running and let his defense go back out there. And that's exactly what they do. Brian Westbrook is about a yard and a half shy of a first down but the clock continues to wind. And. Andy Reid with the way his defense has played over the last month and a half why not send them back out there and force Tavares Jackson to try and beat you the Vikings need two scores yeah I think it's a smart call and, and as I said a little bit earlier I, I really think that this offensive staff has done a good job you know they haven't run the ball really all that effectively but yet they they've hung in there and I think the numbers will still be a little skewed at the end of the day but I think in a normal game this is one of those that that Andy probably would have abandoned the run real early. Rocket hits a good one. Real good one. 
checks up and around the 15 yard line. Jose Leo Hansen downfield to tap it 51 yard punt nothing on the return. Coming up next right here on Fox it's the AT&T postgame show. Certainly plenty to talk about and then 24 redemption an encore presentation at 8 Eastern and Pacific right here on Fox. Starting at their own 15. Vikings the last six times have had the ball they've punted it at the end of every drive. Jackson throws and the pass broken up by Sheldon Brown timed it perfectly as he planted his shoulder pad in the back of Sidney Rice. The secondary for for Philadelphia has just gotten better and better as the year has gone along. I mean the defense in general has been good all season long. The run defense has been good but the pass defense has dramatically improved. They've made some changes in the lineups as the year has gone along. But the guys have really stepped up their play and that's one of the reasons why it's been so difficult to score points against this unit. Jackson throws and out of the reach of Asante Shanko and now it, it just looks like it's completely unraveled for Tavares Jackson. Well this is a, a part of the game that you know one he probably just hasn't gotten a lot of work with and as a young quarterback you know they're able to huddle up right now but you can tell that if they complete a pass and they keep the clock running they're going to go into a no huddle offense they're going to have to but they just have he hasn't been able to get that completion to where you can at least try to start putting the defense on their heels Jackson is one for his last ten throwing the football third and ten. Pressure in Jackson's face the pass incomplete but a flag comes down and it could be for the hit on Tavares Jackson. Personal foul roughing the passer defense number 56 a blow to the side of the helmet 15 yard penalty automatic first down. It's Akeem Jordan. Yeah there it is and that's a textbook it's easy call there for the official and you know when you come in you really got to keep your hands up. And oftentimes when you're trying to bat the ball and you come through with the follow through of your arms when it hits the quarterback's helmet they're going to call that every time even as benign as what it appears sometimes. Derek Bianami the running backs coach talking to Adrian Peterson Eagles have the Vikings right where they want them in a spot where they have to throw the football. They need two scores time winding down good pass complete to Bobby Wade minimal gain just three. Under three and a half to play. And for the Eagles defense, 13 blitzes, one sack. You referenced the game last week that Minnesota had against Steve Spagnolo, who was the pupil under Jim Johnson for eight years when they were together in Philadelphia. And he is now not just the defensive coordinator of the Giants, but one of the hot head coaches in waiting in this league is Tavares Jackson is going to run for the first time in this game and slides down in midfield with a Viking first down and that's really the first time today that we've seen him get outside the pocket and be able to pick up some some yards with his legs and I know in talking with Jim Johnson prior to this game he really expected to put on the film in his preparations this week and see a lot more of this. And he said he was surprised that yeah he has the ability to run but he's really more of a pocket passer. Here's a bad snap and it's recovered by Philadelphia and Jaquay Parker. And that might just do it. A bad snap in the shotgun. And Tavares Jackson and center Matt Burke come off the field talking or yelling at each other and shaking their heads as now Philadelphia takes over up by nine with under 250 to play. Now you see the snap is just down there at Tavares Jackson's ankles. I mean he really had no chance here he is trying to look down the field and see what the coverages are and where his hot reads might potentially be and Matt Burke that's very unusual to see that type of snap from an all pro center.
Both Buckhalter and Westbrook in the backfield. Westbrook gets it over the right side, tripped up by Greenway. And a timeout is taken by Minnesota. How about the games? Donovan McNabb, who is 4 0, on his way to 5 0 at the end of this day. The games that he's had against the Minnesota Vikings and his passer ratings, which have been huge. This is the first time. The moment he'll be held under 100 in that quarterback rating, but all he cares about is stamping the Eagles ticket for a date with the New York Giants next Sunday. Yeah, I don't know that we're going to be hearing a lot more about Donovan McNabb going somewhere else next year. You know, the job that he has done here down the stretch, and and I know Andy Reid gets a he gets a lot of credit for having put Donovan McNabb on the bench there against Baltimore a few weeks back. I don't know that it. I don't know that we should necessarily give Andy as much credit as what he has gotten, but we should give a lot more credit to Donovan McNabb because he's responded very well and he's played exceptionally well. Second down and seven. Fake toss. Trying to get it to Selleck. Good pass, and Brent Selleck has a first down for Philadelphia as he slides down. Does not get out of bounds by his design and Minnesota has to spend another timeout. Pretty well thrown ball right here by Donovan and laying that thing over the head there of Jared Allen and into the hands of Selleck. I tell you Donovan McNabb I think you got to be real pleased with the job that he did today because we talked about the hits that he took the sacks, the sacks that he absorbed but you know he's a pro and he knows that if he hangs in there and just keeps fighting play after play some things are going to come open for him and that's what happened. A couple of big plays today for Philadelphia. First defensively Asante Samuel the interception returned for the touchdown and then the 71 yarder on a screen to Brian Westbrook. And Westbrook finally able to break out. And what had been a frustrating day to that point and Jeffrey Lurie who's the chairman and CEO of the Philadelphia Eagles. He'll be there at Giant Stadium next week. If the Eagles win this ball game, that's where they will be early window next Sunday. And then we know that Arizona will play at Carolina on Saturday night. Two and a half minutes left. That's the final timeout for Minnesota. Today's game being produced by Richie Zions, directed by Artie Kempner, technical producer Joe Stevens. Technical director is Colby Bourgeois, and the audio mixer is Fred Aldis. Associate directors are Greg Scopatoni, Derek Manning. As always, my thanks and Troy's thanks to our editorial consultant Steve Horn here in the booth. The broadcast associates are Rich Gross and Bentley Elliott. The studio show produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy. The highlights coordinator is Janice Kazaza. The studio technical supervisor is Jack Simmons. The supervisor of remote field operations, Jerry Steinberg. Senior producer, Fox Sports, Bill Brown. And the executive producers, Ed Gorn and David Hill. Second down and 10 for the Eagles. Minnesota out of timeouts. Handoff is to Westbrook. And he'll lay down. And a penalty flight comes in at the end of the play. It's a hold against Philly. Holding offense number 89. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. It's Matt Schobel. The other thing that's happened here, Troy, while you can say a lot of good things about Philadelphia, I, I think you have to look at the job done by Leslie Frazier, the defensive coordinator of the Minnesota Vikings. They lost. They're very good middle linebacker E.J. Henderson after the first four games with a foot injury. He played this game without Pat Williams, played this game without Ray Edwards. He has this defense cooking for the most part, and he will be on a couple of different lists as far as head coaching positions are concerned. You hear rumors about Detroit being interested, maybe even the St. Louis Rams. and. Uh, he's a guy that I know Brad Childress believes deserves a chance to run a ball court. Yeah, and a quality guy on top of all that. And, you know, losing defensive coordinators to head coaching positions is not new for Brad Childress either. 
Minnesota by the way declined that holding penalty and so now on third down that run by Westbrook will take us to the two minute warning. It will also take it to fourth down which is what it will be when we come back two minutes left in this game at the Metrodome frustration for the Vikings jubilation for the Philadelphia Eagles on their way to Giants Stadium next weekend. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the new AT&T. Your world delivered. Dude, I just hooked up my new PS3. Yeah, I got resistance too on the new motor storm. Bring it! <laughs> um, see you in 10. Hi. What's that? It's our new movie downloading machine. That's a PlayStation 3. No, look. Hancock, The Dark Knight. Or 51st Dates. Now? Now you can download thousands of your favorite movies and TV shows straight to your PS3. <laughs> Five! Five dollar! Five dollar football! Football! Five! Five dollar! Five dollar football! Everyone's loving the Subway famous $5 footlongs, and there are so many to try, like the Oh My Meatball Marinara or the Temp Delicious Spicy Italian. $5 footlongs at Subway, all day, every day. Subway, eat fresh. Beep. Hey, happy holidays, Snowball's phone. Snowball doesn't have AT&T, so no bars out here at the Winter Cottage. So we didn't get your call warning us about the heat wave that's coming right about now. You know, the one that's going to turn me into a big puddle of buttons and carrot sticks. <laughs> well, thanks for stacking me high and tight, kids. See you next year. Okay, kids. Switch to the network with the best coverage, AT&T. More bars in more places. Now get 50% off all LG phones. Cadillac presents MVP Moments. Led by Terrell Davis and John Elway, the 1998 and 99 Denver Broncos became the sixth franchise in NFL history to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. John Elway, the game's most valuable player, and that may be the champagne toast to an extraordinary NFL Hall of Fame career. Help choose the next MVP presented by the 2009 Cadillac CTS. For more, go to SuperBowl.com slash MVP. Andy Reid was with Brad Childress at Northern Arizona, then brought him to Philadelphia. When he got the job there first as the quarterback's coach, then as the Offensive coordinator as David Akers has been very impressive here today drilling another long field goal 45 yards to make it 26 to 14 it looks like another matchup between the Eagles and the Giants each team won on the other's home turf Giants racked up 218 rushing yards in their week 10 win the Eagles and then not too long ago the Eagles at the Giants one of the best days in a long time for Brian Westbrook Westbrook 203 total yards and the Eagles hold the Giants to 211 total yards as an offense and route to that 20 to 14 win so that game assuming the Eagles win this one is next week on the air at noon Eastern right here on Fox it will be the fourth matchup in the playoffs between the Philadelphia Eagles and the New York Giants. Yeah, and two teams that, that clearly know each other very, very well. And, and as you said, Joe, with the Eagles having won at the Meadowlands just four weeks ago, I mean, a game that, that they certainly will go into with, with great confidence. And I know the Giants, having had this weekend off, they'll be more than prepared as well. Adrian Peterson is waiting for this kick from David Akers. Had a kick return this year. Gets one here in the playoffs. He's, he's going to give it a shot. And David Akers has been a real weapon here today. Got that one into the end zone. Don't forget, coming up, it's the AT&T postgame show and then an encore presentation of the movie, in essence, 24 Redemption at 8 Eastern and Pacific right here on Fox. That leads into the 
season premiere of 24 and if you have not seen that yet your 24 fan or want to get hooked on that series watch it it is very very well done Robert Carlisle is in it and Jack Bauer is back on Fox tonight Tavares Jackson underneath for Chester Taylor and a good play by Lido Shepard two time pro bowler who has been a lost guy defensively for the Philadelphia Eagles this year as he has been replaced first as a starter and they got Asante Samuel then as a nickel back by Jose Leo Hansen and a false start. Yeah, Lito Shepard was hoping that he would be let go or traded False earlier start. in the season. Offense number 62. Five yard penalty remains second down. And it'll be interesting to see exactly what happens to him next year because he is still under contract. You know, and we talked a little bit about Leslie Frazier and the job that he did. I, I think we also need to give credit to Brad Childress and the job that he did and really the entire organization. When you consider the fact that this team came into this year losing their first two games and for him to be able to hold it together and get 10 wins pretty impressive overall. Absolutely. This is Chester Taylor just across the 20 where it will be third down Jaquay Parker on that stop. Yeah, Brad Childress in his third year now a, an even record overall of 24 and 24 six and 10 his first year eight and eight last year 10 and six this year. Good pieces to the bigger puzzle here with the Vikings in place. This is Chester Taylor again has a first down. Brought the Vikings their first divisional championship since the year 2000. First playoff appearance since 2004. But coming up to this point short against the Philadelphia Eagles and his mentor Andy Reid. And the Philadelphia Eagles, I mean, we we all know what had to take place last week in order for them to even have the chance to be here. But, you know, I tell you what, this team overall has been playing some pretty good football here for about six weeks now. Penalty flag is down as Tavares Jackson carries it for a first down. It's a hold against the Vikings. So this one's coming back. I mean, we keep referencing Repeat that. first down. And I would imagine the diehards are watching this game right now. But in case you don't know, because of the way the season unfolded, when the Eagles woke up last Sunday morning, the odds for them to make the postseason were very, very slim. I mean, when you think they had to have Tampa Bay lose at home to Oakland, that happened. And then they needed either Chicago to lose or Minnesota. Combined with a win over Dallas, Chicago lost to Houston, Tampa Bay lost at home to Oakland, and then Philadelphia took care of the rest as Brian Dawkins steps in front of Barry in and breaks up that play. Yeah, now none of that matters anymore. You know, I mean, as improbable as it was that they would get to this game, now they're going to win the wild card game and they're going to go back on the road next week. As we see, oh, Dawkins thought he, thought he had, a, had an easy interception on that one. Only to have the collision, but you know they're they're now in the divisional game of the playoffs with a chance, just like the New York Giants and you know the other teams that have won, with a chance to make it to the conference championship game. And you get there, knowing that you're one step away from going to the big one. That's a lot of fun for these teams. Here is Chester Taylor, and these defensive players for the Eagles are just teeing off with their hits. A gain of eight. Clock continues to wind, and now Andy Reid, one of three coaches to reach seven divisional playoffs in nine seasons. Marv Levy, longtime head coach of the Buffalo Bills, and George Seifert did it as well. You'd almost like to see the Eagles make it all the way to the Super Bowl if for no other reason, just to see <laughs> how good that beard's going to look here in another month. False start. Offense number 62. <laughs> Five yard penalty. As this occurred inside of the last minute with the clock running, the game clock will be set now to eight seconds with the game clock operator reset the game clock to eight seconds. So it's a 10 second runoff and 
That will just about do it. Yeah, they, they were growing playoff beards. Jim Johnson couldn't wait to get rid of his after that loss at Washington. Andy Reid has I, kept his. I think Andy's cheating a little bit, though. I think he might be going in there and just trimming it down just a little bit. Last play of the day. That's it. Philadelphia has won. Donovan McNabb is charged up, and the Eagles are moving on to a date with the Giants next Sunday. Let's go down to Pam Oliver and Brian Westbrook. Okay, Brian, we talked about it um, the other day, just maybe getting some more screens uh, in this offense. Boy, you got that one, and you and you really did a great job on it. How did that unfold? Well, you know, Don got rid of the ball fast, and uh, I, I would say I had 10 guys downfield blocking for me, you know, and it, 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 it just happened for me. My offensive line got, did a great job downfield. Wide receivers did a great job downfield. My fullback did a great job downfield. And, you know, those guys are overplaying a lot of things today. And we weren't able to establish a run like we needed to. But uh, that screen came just in time. Next week against a division rival, uh, a rested rival at that. What are some of your early thoughts about that when you've had tremendous games against them? It's going to be a tough game up there in the Meadowlands. And you know those guys are rested. They're a very good football team for us. And we have to go out there and I'll try to execute our game plan to play our game. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Back to you, Joe. All right, Pam. Thank you. And thank you to Brian Westbrook for sticking around. We'll see him next Sunday. The four pieces of that wild card puzzle are now complete. The Ravens winners, the Cardinals winners, the Chargers, and now Philadelphia. We'll come back and wrap up after this.